we started out and we talked about, tiny recap, we, talked, uh, we started off in 1 Peter 3.15. And uh, if you'll pull that up in the Amplified for me, guys, um, we're going to read that again. And we said, look, at, we're, list we're living in a dark time. <laughs> and we're not going to start off being negative, but we'll just say that one thing. How about that? Right. That it's, it's a little dark. It's a little dark, right? It's a little, it's a little scary if you don't know God. It's, it is. I mean, I am so glad that I know him, and I just don't go to church. I know him. I have a relationship with him. I'm not just a church attender. I don't just sit my boots of hiney on a seat every week in every service. No, I have a purpose of why I come, what I'm doing, and when I walk out of these doors, I have a purpose and a plan for my life. I get filled up, and I go out. Amen. Amen. So let's read this here together, 1 Peter uh, 3.15 in, in the Amplified. And it said, But in your heart set Christ apart as holy and acknowledge him as Lord. Is that First Peter 3.15? Yeah. All right. And put your heart. Always be ready to what? Give a what? A logical defense to anyone who asks you to account for the hope that is in you. So what is that? Why, why, why aren't you freaking out right now? You, I know you just got that report. Well, let me tell you. Pull up a seat, sister, brother, and let me tell you a little story. That was anointed spit. And so just, just pull, pull up a seat, and, and you just sit right here, and let me tell you. In other words, we have to be ready, not ashamed. I'm not ashamed of the anointing. I'm not ashamed of the Holy Ghost, and I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so to give an account for the hope that is in you, and but do it courteously and respectfully. Remember, we talked about that. Yeah. Don't just be, you know, but, but I'm, I'm a Christian, and I'm bold as a lion. Well, you know what? Nobody's going to listen to you if you're rude right. and unruly. Yeah. Right? Because first of, all, first of all, faith works by love. And so if you're not walking in the love of God, if it doesn't come out with some love on it because he's in you, well, then nobody's going to want to hear what we have to say. So I believe that's why I it. do it courteously and respectfully. Uh, and, and so always be ready to give an answer. It's time to shine. And uh, Matthew 5, uh, 15 through 17. Matthew 5, and I'm just, I'm just highlighting, recapping uh, what we talked about. Matthew 5, 15 through 17 says, you are the light of the world. Who is? You. I am. I'm the light of the world. A city, it doesn't say Jesus is the light of the world, even though he was when he came to this earth, right? He's the light. He call him the light of the world. But now he's in me. Amen. He came to make his home in me. He came to make his home in me. Let that just settle for a minute. He lives on the inside of you. You have to say it a bunch for it to become a reality, to become revelation knowledge that he lives in me. He lives in me. He's in me, so I am a light. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but they put it on a lampstand, and it gives light to all those who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men. Let your light so shine before men. I'm going to stop right there because we should not be ashamed of what we have on the inside. If ever there was a time that people need to hear the gospel, to hear what, what was it that changed your life, they need it now. They need it now. And not just once a month when the outreach team goes out. Hello. Can I get an amen with my foot? Come on. We, 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 don't, just, we don't just, oh, there's just a little outreach team and we're going to have them go. We are outreach. My life is outreach. My life is a billboard. My testimony is, is a billboard. I am a light. You are a light. Amen. It says, let my light so shine before men that they may see, that they may see, that they may see, that the light might go on when they see, that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened, that, that they could see, that the blinders fall, all, fall off their eyes. They're able to, their ears are unplugged, that the gospel goes in. Amen. Amen. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Amen. Amen. So we talked about that verse. And then we, I, I'm, I'm going, I'm going, I'm getting there. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19 says, Do not earnestly remember the former things. 
Neither consider the things of old. Guys, if, if the, the past has weighed you down, let this, what's today? The 9th? What is today? The 10th already, see? January 10th already. It's just trucking right along, right? If, if, if your past has given you a heartache and it has been, it, the things that have happened to you, have, you're just carrying around in a semi-truck behind you, let it fall off this year. Let this be a new time, a new season of your life. Come on, a new season of your life. Don't keep, keep on picking up the stuff that you, you used to pick up. Amen. He said, don't remember it. No, in order to be a light, in order for your face to shine, your light to shine, you can't be picking up every, well, it's a new day. I'm just going to go get that stuff that, that just weighs me down. All, and you go in the bedroom and you pick it up. And How do we do that? By our thoughts. Yeah, right? Right? He says, don't remember the former things, neither consider the things of old. I've known people, and they live in the past. They talk about it all the time. They talk about what happened to them all the time. They talk about what their parents did to them. I am not diminishing if something awful happened to you as a kid. I'm not diminishing if something happened awful in your marriage. I'm not diminishing that because Jesus is the mender. He is the mender of the broken heart. He is the one who can take broken things, and he, in one second he can put them back together. I'm not diminishing that. But what I'm saying is at some point we have to say, you know what? He forgot it. I'm forgetting it. And if we can't do it, we say, God, I need your help. I need your strength. I'm looking to you. I'm forgetting those things which lie behind. And I'm pressing towards, I'm, I'm mashing two verses here together. But Paul said, hey, I'm pressing. I'm going forward towards the prize of the high calling in Jesus Christ. Because if I go to pick up the past, I can't look to what's ahead of me. And we're not going to let this year trip us up anymore. We're going forward. We're going ahead in 2024. Jesus is coming back soon. He's coming back so soon. I'm telling you. I mean, I wrote it in my book. That was the very first chapter. Jesus is coming soon. Why? Because he's coming soon. <laughs> Period. Right? So don't remember the former things. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, I'm doing a new thing, he says. He's doing a new thing. Well, that was written in Isaiah a long time ago. No, this is promised for me today. His promises are yes and amen. And I take them and they're mine. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do, not, do you not perceive and know it? And will you not give heed, heed to it? There we go again, that the eyes of our understanding would be in light, that we might know the hope of his calling. That's why we need to pray those Ephesians prayers. Why? Because we can see this. Can, he's saying, do you perceive it? Do you even recognize it? Yeah. That it's right in front of you. Yeah. Yeah. It's right here, guys. Yeah. Well, it's just another. No, it's, it, th there's brand new things ahead of it for us. Yeah. There's things ahead for us. I will, I will even make a way in the wilderness. How many of you have ever felt like you're in the wilderness? Yeah. Oh! <laughs> there's coyotes. <laughs> Sorry, well, that wasn't a very good uh, thing of them, right? But a coyote, right? They, have you ever felt like you're in a wilderness? Yes. Like they, they, everywhere you look, your lips are parched. <laughs> Jesus, help me, yeah. right? Because you're out in the wilderness. Yeah. He said, I will even make a way yeah. in the oh, wilderness. Right. And I will make rivers in your desert. Oh. I will make rivers in your dry places. Yeah. Huh, yeah. huh. That's good news right there. I'm going to do it. He said, I will do it. Amen. It's a new season. Yes. It's a new day. Yes. I like that song, Fresh Anointing. Yes. It's flowing my way. Yes. It's a season of power yes. and prosperity. Yes. Ha! It's a season coming to me. It's a new season coming to me. Hey, I'm living in that, right? Yes. Come on. What? It's up to you. It's up to me what I'm going to live in this year. Yes. Do, do we all have things that are facing us? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. I hear him. <laughs> I hear him in the wilderness. Hey, but we're going through because we got streams in the desert. I'm going to my oasis. Amen. That's Jesus. He's, he's, he's all around me. He's in me. I'm walking through. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. 
And I think it says over there in, one, in, in a couple verses down, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. <laughs> Even when people are all around me, oh, they're saying this and that. They're saying, you owe this. You got to do this. Yeah. This is going to fall apart. Everything. When all of that's happening, he said, here, here's a feast right here. Just yeah. feast on this. Yeah. Just feast right here on, on, on my word. Right? Just pull up a seat right here at the table of the word. Hey! And you got everything you need. This isn't in my notes, but it's good. Amen. So I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers. Hey! 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. So let's go from here. So it's time to shine. It's time for our faith to shine. And where I left off last week was the first point. <laughs> that was just the introduction. Took us a whole, uh, a whole meeting and a half. So where we want to get to tonight is, number one, in shining, we need our faith to shine. Yes. Pastor said, oh, we're talking about faith again. Oh, yeah, we are. Faith, life, family, Amen. church. Amen. That's, that's one of our mandates is to teach faith. Amen. 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 So we need to understand that faith is a spiritual force. It's a spiritual force on the inside of us. Without it, we can't do anything. The Word of God says, uh, without faith, it's impossible to please Him. We had one person argue with us one time, a long time ago, and he said, you can't live your life on the stiletto of faith. I guess that meant a shoe. I don't know. And I said, well, let me tell you a little verse, and it goes like this. <laughs> without faith, you can't please Him. So you can take your theology and all your little doctorates, and you can go bye-bye because I believe in the Word. Amen. Without it, we can't please him. It's a spiritual force that was given to us by God to use to bring in. I'm just reading what, what I put here. It's given to us by God to bring in what is not seen into the seen realm. Right. Let me say that again. Faith is a spiritual force that was given to us by God to use to bring what is not seen into the seen realm. So we're, we're taking with the hand of faith, if you, if you can visualize, because that's a good example, with the hand of faith, I'm reaching into the unseen with my faith, and I'm pulling what I need out of the unseen into the seen with my faith. Out of the unseen. That's weird. No, it's not. It's called faith. <laughs> Calling those things which be not as though they were. Yeah, right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So faith is a spiritual force given to us by God to use to bring what is not seen into this seen realm. Amen. You know, um, over there, I was thinking about this today, you know, uh, anybody Star Wars fans? Yeah. yeah. I grew up watching Star Wars. In fact, I, it tells my age because I remember my parents when it first came out, we went to the movies and it was like this big premiere. Did you remember? And uh, you they were lined up. I mean, it was probably 100 people in line. I mean, seriously, it was a big deal. The first one, I don't know what it's called, The New Hope. Anyway, not, a, not important, but the, the, uh, the Star Wars, uh, what did he have? It's so uh, parallel to spiritual things. I'm not saying it's spiritual. Don't write me a letter, okay? I'm saying in some ways it is, is parallel to some things. And, you know, you got Darth Vader is evil. You got Luke Skywalker is good. And you got the Force. And all the things, right? So you have the force. He said, may the force be with you. Yes. Uh, we can start saying, may the anointing be with you, right? Yeah. Right? The anointing that abides on the inside. In other words, there's a force to faith. There's a hand of faith. Yeah. <laughs> there's all different ways to look at it, but we can use our faith. Yeah. We have, it, it's like a force, right. it, you know? And, and I, I guess I'm, I think of things like that. You know, it, we can use that to get what we need to bring into this, mm, this other realm, out of this other realm, into reality, yeah. what we need. This year, we need that, y'all. Yes. We need to call some things. It's time to shine. Why? So people can see your life yeah. and say, what did I say? It was a billboard? <laughs> that they can see your life and say, how did you get that? Right. What, what happened to your body? I, I used to have a cane. Where'd your cane go? Or whatever. I'm just using yeah. that example. Your faith is what brought it into reality. That's right. 
It's time for our faith to shine. Come on. In other words, God has given us everything we need to have victory in our life. But we have to use our faith. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we understand that people, I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I'm this way. I'm looking for results. I don't like to lose. Does anybody else like to lose? How many of you just love, you just love to lose? It's just wonderful. It's just like, you know, when I, I mean, I'm competitive. I know my husband is too. And then that one time when we were dating, were we dating or were we married? And you told me that you, we played racquetball all those years and, and uh, you, you let me win because you were playing with your right hand because he's left-handed. Yeah, that started a nice fight. <laughs> I, I was like, I thought I actually beat him a couple times, you know. He's like, I was using my right hand. And so, so I'm competitive, you know. I don't like to lose. And I think that's a good quality. I mean, you don't want to be run over all your life, right? So, but I don't like to lose. And I don't like to lose spiritually to the enemy when God's already provided everything I need. He's already given me all the answers. He's given me all the ammunition I need. He's given me his word. As, as this, this wonderful tool in my life to, to uh, you know, combat the things that come against me. Yeah. And then, what, I'm going to lose, sit down, and, and just let him run all over me? No. But that's what a lot of Christians do. Mm-hmm. Not this year, y'all. Right. Not this year. Glory. It's time to use our faith, get up and use our faith. If you've let your faith go in some areas. I mean, I, I know people have asked this. You know, I, I wrote this down. People said they're looking for results and they ask questions like this, like, why is it taking so long? Now, if this is you, just look straight ahead and be like, amen, Pastor Kendall. All right. Wait, why is it taking so long? You ever asked that? I've asked that. Why is this taking so long? <laughs> this is crazy. Why is this taking so long? And you get frustrated, right? And you get, you, you, if you let it, if you let it get in you, it can really uh, sidetrack your faith. Why is it taking so long? Why am I having a hard time receiving? Everybody else got their healing. Why why am I not receiving? Why does it seem that my faith isn't working? I mean, these are some of the questions that the enemy will bring to your mind because that is his realm. Whenever you get over into the realm of questions, you are in his arena. So I won't go into it tonight because we're not talking about the mind. I've already done, we've done a little series on, on, on that. But if we, if we talk about that for a minute, it is important how we think yes. and what we're thinking about. Yes. If those thoughts, I'm not saying it's a sin if those thoughts come in your mind. I'm saying it's how you handle them. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. There you, go. That's good. you know, Brother Hagin used to say, you can't help that a bird flies over your head, but you can help if he makes a nest in your hair. <laughs> right? <laughs> Right? And so you let him make a nest in your hair, right? And, and so, you know, is that correct? Is that? And so, I mean, my goodness, we've got to be careful of what comes in our, I mean, when we start questioning, he's in that realm. I mean, he'll have you, he'll have you questioning everything then. Because he knows if you live in that realm of questions, your faith will not work. Because you'll start questioning, well, you know, last time, Last time I, I was believing for that, and I was really ramped up, and I had all my scriptures. <laughs> I'm not making fun, but, you know, that's how we get, right? We're like, God, I did all this. Like, I did all this. Look, all this. Like, I even have highlighted in my Bible. I should get extra credit for that. Like, I even have the pink and the yellow one. I mean, I've got them all highlighted. Come on. And you show them your Bible, and you're like, right? Because you start, you start pleading your case. We live, when we live in the realm of questions like that, we'll be defeated every single time. But what we do is, and this is, I'll give you practical, how to answer. When those thoughts come, when they start trying to, to sidetrack your faith and derail your faith, you have to answer it back. Yes, yeah. We have to answer it back. Because those thoughts will come, and they'll come like machine guns, y'all. It won't just be one thought, and you're like, oh, I can handle that. It'll be like, bub, 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 bub. <laughs> like, look at them. They don't like you. Da, 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 da. They said this about you. Oh, my gosh, you know, you're not going to make it. See, uh, if you go to church, it doesn't work. Da, da, da. And you, you'll have 50 thoughts before you walk it down and sit down in your seat in church. <laughs> I know I'm just preaching to myself. I know this is just me. I know this is just me because you know how I'm saying that? Because it happens to me. It happens to me on Sunday morning sometimes. I come in, all these thoughts on the way down the thing, you know, right? Yeah. He tries to attack us and, and, and enter through the way we think. Yeah. 
But for our faith to work, we have to answer it back. We have to answer the thoughts back. How are we going to answer those thoughts? You're not going to make it. You're going to go under. This time, this time, buddy. <laughs> I know last time was great. And I'm sure God is wonderful to you. But he'll, he'll quit, right? Didn't he do that to Adam and Eve? But if you eat of that tree, it, you might not surely die. Nah, nah, you'll, you'll be okay, right? So it's the thought process. It's how we address the thoughts. It's by, it, and we answer them back with the word. That's why we have to be in the word. Listen, if you don't know where your Bibles are, how are your kids going to know where their Bibles are? I heard some crickets on that one. <laughs> right? We have to know where the, where the word is. We have to know where the word of God is. Got a little there. And we have to know where that is and how to get to what we need. Right? We can't just, church is great. I'm so glad you guys are the, you guys come faithfully on Wednesday nights to hear the word, but you still have to feed yourself Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, even on Saturday morning when you get up, because sometimes those are the worst days. (laughs) Right? You're like, yeah, man, I'm just going to chill. And then what happens Sunday morning? I want to chill. You just need to chill. You just need to chill on the religious stuff. You're good. I mean, you've been at least once this month. I mean, come on. Come on, right? It's in the realm of questions. It's in the realm of questioning what God has already promised. So when it comes to our bodies, he'll do the same thing. You're standing on the word for your body. You're, you're standing with your scriptures. You know what you've already confessed. You're, you're putting it out there. And what's happening? You lay your head on your pillow at night, and the, and the thoughts come. It's not going to work this time, though. This time, it's not going to work. It's just absolutely not going to work. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And do you feel that pain in your body? Do you feel that little twinge in your body? You need to go to WebMD. Because I'm telling you, sister so-and-so went to WebMD, and she knew, and she, she had the diagnosis before she went to the doctor. He just, he'll take you down paths that aren't good, right? And so we have to know how to combat. We have to know how to answer. What's our answer? Faith. Faith's always the answer. We have to, we have to say, we have to be hard with doubt. Hard with it. Do you know what I mean by that? Like, don't tolerate it. Amen. Like, you know how you get with your kids when you've told them 10 times, and on the 11th time, you're like, I'm done? Yeah, right. yeah like that way the first time. Yeah. <laughs> right? So don't let it build up. Like, some, some of us treat the, enemy, the devil like we treat our kids sometimes. You know, you're like, I'm going to count to three, and, you know, one, two, right? No, no, no. No, no, with him? No, no. We don't tolerate right. that stuff. Amen. Right? On the first twinge. On the first thing, right, we say, no, you don't. We don't tolerate doubt. When we start having thoughts come in, d- doubt is going to steal our joy. It's going to steal our faith. Yeah. We have to put our foot down and say, I recognize that. Yeah. That's the enemy because God didn't give me doubt. He's not going to be doubting his own word. Sometimes if it, it, just the simple uh, thing of, of recognizing who it is that's even giving you the thoughts. Some people, they don't even know if it's the devil, God, the pizza they ate last night. They don't know. They don't know what it is. But being able to discern if it's some kind of bad thought that's going to take you in a bad direction, that's the enemy. He's lying to us. We're talking about faith, y'all. We're talking about having strong faith. We're talking about letting our faith shine so others can see how good God is. Amen. 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 They'll want what we have. So we refuse to doubt. We don't tolerate doubt in our lives. How about this one? Uh, Let's turn over here to Jeremiah 10, 23. Jeremiah. Jeremiah. What a great name. Jeremiah 10, 23. You know, when it comes to faith, sometimes we, we, you know, sometimes I'm, I'm sitting here talking about healing or I'm talking about, you know, uh, finances, but how about this one? Direction. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Duh. If I had a line down here tonight, all y'all would be up in here. 
right? <laughs> How many of you want to know the direction for your life? And everybody, line up across the, line up across the, right? Okay, so let's read this verse. Let's read this verse. Jeremiah 10, 23. Um, can you guys, I'll just read it. Oh, Lord, Jeremiah saying this. I know that the determination of the way of a man is not in himself. It is not in a man, even in a strong man, or in a man at his best to direct his own steps. So, it's not in our own, we can't, we can't direct our own steps. Well, let me put it this way. Lots of people do it, and they're not successful at it. Can we read that in the, in the New King James, if you don't mind? It's just wordy that way. And I'll read it here in the New King James. Oh, Lord, I know the way of a man is not in himself. Oh, but, Pastor, the Lord is showing me that uh, I'm to move to Iceland. In a, okay. Well, the Lord's showing you. Go on. I think in all the years we've had people, you know, tell us what the Lord told them. And, you know, we don't argue with them. If you come and tell us that the Lord told you, I'm not going to argue with you. I hope it's the Lord. <laughs> but I'm not going to argue with you. Never argued with anybody on that. I know the way of a man is not in himself. It's not in us to know the way. It is, it is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. So let's find out how we do. Let's look over here. Psalms 37. And let's pull this up. Do you guys have an LT? Yeah, let's read this, uh, Psalms 37, 23 and 24 in the NLT. So we know it's not in ourselves to direct our own steps. So let's see how we do. Psalms 37, 23 and 24. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. How many godly people do I have in here? Wednesday night, godly people. We're in the house. All right, the Lord directs the steps of the godly. He delights in what? Just the big things, you know, like the big things, like you getting married, like, you know, what else is big? Uh, you having a baby? No, no. He delights in what? Every detail. Every detail of their lives or of your life. You guys, you ought to be running around on this. This is like good stuff right here. The Lord directs the steps of the godly. I'm godly, so I'm relying on him to help me and to direct my steps. And, 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 you know, you go over there. Oh, where is it? Uh, uh, he says, how be it when the spirit of truth has come, he'll guide us into all truth. And he won't speak of himself, but he'll show us things to come. We have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, the comforter, the, the, the guide, everything that we need. Now we have him on the inside of us. We can't fail. We won't misstep if we'll spend time praying in the Holy Ghost and find out what the plan is and quit trying to do it in our own strength. So many, we've tried 50 things. Well, I'm just going to try this job. I'm going to try this man. I'm going to try this girl. I'm going to try this. Well, why don't you stop trying? Why don't you let God direct your steps? He says if you're godly, he, he, he delights in every detail. How about, how about every detail? How about, how about every detail? Come on. Let's read this in the New King James. Ooh, I could preach on that. Come on. In every detail, every detail. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delights in his way. I like the other one better because it's every detail. But he delights in his way. You're looking for direction. You're looking for purpose. Doesn't come from your own head. But God lives in me. Yeah, yeah, I know. And he'll give you desires and things that that we're to do. I get that. But don't, don't step, don't step trying to do it in your own strength, thinking you got it. Pray it out. Amen. Amen. So faith to step out, faith to direct our steps, faith to trust in God. You know, uh, I think it was Mark Hankins that gave this analogy. It was a long time ago, but if, if I were to pull up at Publix and, um, and pull up in my car into the parking space. And when I pulled up, I looked over and the grocery doors automatically opened because I pulled in my parking space. Is that how it works? No. no. They don't have sensors out there, right? What do I have to do? I have to get out of my door, even if it's raining, get out of the door, lock my car, take steps, 
walk up to the front of the store, and there's a mat, and it has a sensor on it. And when I step there, the door opens, right? But what did it take for me to get to when the door opened? Steps. It's that way spiritually. We have to take steps of faith. Remember I ended on that last week? I said so many times we try to take leaps of faith. You know, hey, hey, if God tells you to do so, I mean, I'll give you an example. Man, I could just, <laughs> but, but when we were, we were going to move here, and we've told this story before. I mean, I remember, I, I can actually feel the emotions of it when I talk about it because the, the fear that tried to come on us stepping out into the unknown. Right. Yep. But guess what? We knew. Mm-hmm. And there was still fear right. that would try. You see? So when, uh, and my, my example is when we were associate pastors in Alabama, we knew we were praying. We knew both together that that was the next step that we were supposed to take. We were supposed to go ahead and let go of our job there, give our resignation, have our house sell, and move our stuff to Warner Robins. That's all we knew. That's fun, huh? That's real fun. And the fun part was once we did that and no more paychecky checky coming in my handy handy, right? I was thinking of thoughts like, talk about thoughts. I was like, well, there's a McDonald's across the street. I'll put my hand to do anything. I'll work at McDonald's. Nothing wrong with that. You know, I'm thinking all these thoughts like it's getting real. <laughs> I mean, like it's real, like really real. Okay, God, we've, we know we heard from you. I don't even have to question whether I heard from him. See, that's, that's where people miss it is they, they think they know and they want to know and, they, and, 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 you know, and it's all flowy, wishy-washy, and they really don't know, but they're hoping and praying that if they step out, that it's going to work. We knew. So I'm just using an exa- example. But that didn't mean it was all beds of roses. Like people were like, oh. And we walked out of our house and all these roses were flying up in the air. And we're like, it's the will of God. And no, no, it was not like that. It was like Scaryville. I remember walking. Do you remember walking? We were holding hands of going on a walk one night. And I was sweating. I was like sweating. He woke up in the middle of the night a couple of times sweating. I mean, it was, it was fight of faith. We're talking about faith. We stood. We had our scripture. We said, no, God, you're not going to let us down. We know you're for us. You know? And so what happened? Our, our, our house sold. And then it sold for even more than what it, you know, it was, it was great. And then it took us over here and then blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. Right? So that was the step. And then once we took that step, the other steps that we took, it wasn't like, you know, oh, we have a 5,000-seat auditorium. Glory. Hey, hey, woo. No, it wasn't like that. No, it was like, hey, get a trailer, and you go set up a church for five years in a trailer and set up all your stuff. That was fun. Yeah, right? So it's not always the way we think. I'm sharing this so, so we don't think that, you know, it's always just a, a easy. No, he said the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. And he delights in every detail of my life, but it's work. Hey, oh, she said a four-letter word in church. Yeah, I said work. It takes work. Uh, It takes determination to stay in faith when you don't feel like it, when it don't look like it, when it looks like everything else, all hell's breaking loose in your life. And you say, no, no, I believe you, God. I trust you. I know, and I'm going to stay on, I'm going to stay on the faith train. And I know you're going to be with me. And you know, that verse pastor always reads, he said, I'll never let you down. I'll never release my hold on you. I'll never, remember he's always reading that? I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He's with us. He's not going to let us fail. I think it says, I will never, ever let you fail. Amen. 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 Glory to God. So he directs our steps. My steps are ordered. So when we go to the grocery store and, and, you know, you get there, you have to take steps to get up there for that door to open. And and this is answers for a lot of you in here. You have to take steps. It's one step at a time. Take that step and then, you know, whatever it is, whether it's a business, whether it's 
uh, somebody that you're dating, whether it's, you know, I don't know. I don't know all about all y'all. <laughs> a lot of you don't even tell us. I don't even know. I just got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> I don't want to know. But, you know, you know, you know what I'm saying? So he'll lead you. He'll guide you. He'll direct your steps because he cares about it and it cares about you. And he'll be in your arena when you allow him to be. <laughs> when I mean in the arena, you know, that boxing arena. You know, when they got guys in the corner, they're like, oh, and you got blood and everything. You know, they're like, come on, you can do it. And they're rubbing your shoulders. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You got God in your corner. Amen. You got the Holy Ghost in there, right? right? And he's helping you. Yeah. Even when you feel like you're get, be, getting the snot beat out of you. Yeah. Come on. He's with us. Amen. He's for us, and he will never let us down. Amen. How about this one? 1 John 5, 4. A couple more verses tonight. You guys are listening well. It's awesome. 1 John 5, 4, it says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So he just told us that he directs the steps of the godly. That's me. And now he says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. Amen. Are you born of God? Yes. Oh, okay, that you're godly, right? So then you overcome the world. Wow. That was melodramatic. <laughs> you, we overcome the world. We overcome whatever comes our way. What's going to come your way might not come my way. But what comes your way, you can overcome. Amen. Well, I don't understand why that person doesn't, isn't walking through what I am. I mean, they just don't know what I'm walking through. Listen, you are not a special case. There's lots of people that have gone through what you're going through. And I'm not saying that to be ugly. I'm saying that because we need to hear that. Because sometimes we get in pity party. We get in fetal position motion. It's a new year. Get out of that position. Come on. Put your head back. Stand up straight and let's go. Let's run. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't let the enemy. He, he, he tried to kick you around last year. Come on. This is a new year. It's a new time. It's a new, it's a new era. I'm telling you. There's new things that he's doing and I don't want to miss them. Praise God. For whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. What, what is it, y'all? It's my faith. Well, but you talk about faith all the time. Yeah, because it's, it's what overcomes the world. It's how I'm going to kick the tush of the enemy. Hey, it's how we win. That's how we win is our faith. I'm not going to leave my faith at the curb. I'm going to bring my faith to the battle. Hallelujah. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even my faith. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? Of course, that's a question on mine. But we've overcome the world, y'all. And, and we just have to believe that by faith. You might not feel like it. It may not look like it. <laughs> shoo we. Huh. We have to look away from failure. Look away from the past. Look away from the things that have held us down and held us in bondage. I'm tired of that. I'm tired of the days where I get up and I feel guilty. I, or I felt guilty because the enemy, because I've, I've, I've let one day go by. No, I'm redeemed. He bought me back. Amen. I am righteous. I am holy. Amen. And I have to talk that way. Remember in the, in the, in the beginning I said we have to talk to it. We have to talk to those thoughts. If you have to say them out loud in your car and your kids can hear, listen, they better let you hear what they're saying. They, they might think you have three heads. Hey, come on, bring it. Bring it. Because you know what? It's your salvation. Yeah. Amen. And they need it. And, and, and let me just say this. You know what? They need to see mama or daddy or whoever it is raising those kids. They need to see that you've got the victory. Yeah. Because you know what? If your God is not real to them, I mean, to, to you, it ain't, he ain't real to them. He has to be real to you. They have to see you go vertical. Hey, hey, God, you know what? They have to see you pray. They have to see you be real in church. Well, bless God. Hallelujah. Praise God. No, they can see right through that. Come on. They need to see that we have a relationship with God, that he is real, and it ain't just a church. It's every day. <laughs> hey, kids, you know what? We need to believe extra uh, this, this month. So come on, let's grab hands. Did we do it? Oh, yeah. Christmas is coming. We grabbed hands. 
Those were the days. Those were the days. <laughs> you know, come on, kids. <laughs> you want a new robot for Christmas? Come on, we're going to pray it in. <laughs> hey, right? Why? So it can be real to them. Yes. Right? So church is not just church. Right. See, when it's just church, they leave the church. Because, hey, hey, listen, and they have decisions to make. Uh, you get, you, we can lay it out all day. The power of God can fall. They can fall out, shake in the floor, but they still got to make a decision. Right. So I'm, not say, I'm just saying live, live it real at home. Yeah. Let God be real to you. Let your faith be the real thing. Right. Say, kids, you know what? I, I had a bad day yesterday. You might have seen mama, but you know what today? You know what? God is, God is, is, is who's in control of this house. And listen, that's how we're doing it. Well, I ain't doing it. No, I'm taking your phone away, and you can, you can kiss it goodbye until you're a senior. I don't care. That's mean. Uh-huh. You know what? It'll save their life. <laughs> don't get me started. All right. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Hallelujah. All right. Let's end on a good note so you guys don't get mad. 2 Corinthians 4, 13 through 18. We'll end on this. And since we have the same spirit of faith according what is written, I believed and therefore I have spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. Knowing that he who raised up the Lord Jesus Christ will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes that grace having spread through the many may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. Therefore, we don't lose heart. Even though our outward man is perishing, our inward man is being renewed day by day. Everybody say this for my light affliction. For my light. But Pastor Kendall, oh my goodness, since 22, my life, it's just been, I mean, you just don't know. I might not know, but I, I know that it, if Paul can call his affliction light, yes. and, and the things we read, if we had even time to go into them tonight, Remember I said that even Tony Cook had studied it and, and because of the rains, the torrential downpour, and he was in prison underneath, they put him in like a, like a, a prison that was underneath the, the level of the city or whatever. And, and so what happened was when the rain came, came it would fill up and the, the waste of the city would come in and it would be up to his knees. And he wrote books of the Bible in that. His light affliction. Yeah. <laughs> Have you woken up and you had, you know, unmentionables by your, <laughs> by your knees? <laughs> not, not, right, not lately. I haven't had that. Right? But I'm not diminishing what you've gone through. I'm just saying he said my light affliction, yeah. which is but for a moment. He had a revelation right. of adversity. Yeah. You know, I had a sermon I, I, we did, I did way back, and... and uh, and I, uh, I think it was called Do Hard Things. I don't know if you guys remember that, but I remember preaching it because I was living it. <laughs> and so I remember preaching that, and I thought, you know, do, I've got to do hard things. Why? Not only for me, but those are coming with me. Yes. Those, are, those are with me, and those are coming behind yes. me. Yes. My children. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we just got to do hard things. Yes. Got to wipe the blood, the tears, yes. and keep going. For my light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working. <laughs> it's working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Go to 18 for me, please. While we don't look at the things which are seen. I know I've read this many times, but I want you all to see it again. While we don't look at the things which are seen. How hard is that? That's difficult sometimes. When everything is saying war, rumors of war, diseases, are my kids going to make it? Are we going to have enough money? What's 24 hold? What's it going to look like? Am I ever going to get married? Is this going to happen in the world? What's going to happen? I'm not going to look at what's seen, but I'm going to look at what's not seen. What's not seen? Lots of this. His word. The things that he said in his word, a lot of these things, I can't see them with my physical eye, right. but I can believe them by faith, yes. and I can walk in them by faith. Amen. You're saved by faith, like Pastor said. You know it. Right. You wouldn't let anybody steal that away from you. Right. Why are you letting him take your healing? Yeah. Why are you letting him walk all over you with, with, with your finances? Come on. Yeah. 
right? Come on. We don't look at the things which, for the things which are seen are temporary. They're very temporary. But the things which are not seen are eternal. <clears throat> are eternal. You can go on to 19 for me. There's no 19? Okay, praise God. Uh, so the things which are seen, are not seen, are eternal. So we understand that it matters where we look. It matters what we have our eyes on, and it matters how we answer our, the thoughts that come to us. I'm telling you, he said, this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Get your faith involved by getting your mouth moving this year. Talk to things that are staring you down. Talk to things. Get the word in your mouth and start declaring the way it's going to be, and it will change. If the scenery hasn't changed, look at what you've been saying. If the scenery hasn't changed in a while, look at what you've been saying. Have we been speaking the word by faith, or are we complaining? Because sometimes it can, we think in our minds, we, we trick ourselves. We're like, well, I'm believing. I'm standing. But we're really kind of half complaining, half murmuring, right? We have to just, just make sure that that's not where we're at and just get our confession, get, get the things that we believe and stand firm and watch God come through for us. Amen. Amen. He will. Well, that's enough for tonight. Hallelujah. We'll pick up here next week because I'm, I'm not done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Isn't he good? Isn't he good? How many of you got something out of that tonight? Amen. So it's-